The Birth Flowers Block of the Month patterns feature different flowers for each month of the year. Most of the flowers are appliqued in the same way, but June's roses are a bit unique. I'm Kathy Wiley, and in this tutorial, we will take a closer look at the roses in the June block and get a better understanding of how they are put together. There is a large rose in the center of the block and four smaller roses around the edges of the wreath. On the pattern drawing, the large rose is number 20 and each rose petal is numbered after the decimal point. Most flower petals are appliqued from the outside edges in toward the center, with the flower center added last. This creates the type of rounded blossom we want for September's aster, or November's chrysanthemum. But the center of a rose is inside its petals, so the usual approach doesn't make sense or look realistic. As a result, rose 20 in the June block is appliqued from the inside out. Since we appliqued the patches in numerical order, 20.1 will be the first piece of the rose. The oval marked with an asterisk means it's a flower center that can be beaded, appliqued, or embroidered after the rest of the flower is complete. The edges of 20.1 are completely overlapped by the adjacent patches of 20.2 and 20.3. Any edge of a shape that is covered by another shape does not need to be turned under. This means that the edges of patch 20.1 don't need to be turned under at all. For more information about overlapping applique, please visit the tutorial devoted to that subject. This edge of 20.2 will overlap 20.1 and will need to be turned under. The rest of 20.2 will be overlapped by 20.3 and 20.5, so it does not need to be turned under. The part of 20.2 that overlaps 20.1 will be sewn onto the rows. This edge of 20.3 will overlap 20.1 and 20.2 so it will need to be turned under. The rest of 20.3 will be covered by 20.4, 20.5, and 20.7, so it does not need to be turned under. The part of 20.3 that overlaps 20.1 and 20.2 will be sewn onto the rows. Once you get the hang of working from the inside out, rows 20 will go together like any other flower. It just takes a bit of an adjustment if you're used to working from the outside in. The smaller roses on the pattern drawing are numbered 16. What makes this flower unique is that there is a split seam between petals 16.3 and 16.8. A split seam is used when we want part of a patch to go under and over its adjacent patches. Let's take a closer look. 16.1 are the leaves that will go on first. The edge that is covered by 16.3 does not need to be turned under. 16.2 is the first rose petal. The outside edge will be turned under and the parts covered by 16.3 and 16.4 will not. Then we get to 16.3. We want part of it to be covered by 16.4, but we want the rest of the petal to overlap 16.1, 16.2, and 16.8, but 16.8 isn't appliqued yet. Here's where the split seam comes in. The part of 16.3 that overlaps 16.1 and 16.2 will be appliqued onto the rows. The part that will be covered by 16.4 will not be turned under. And the part that will ultimately cover 16.8 will be turned under, but not sewn, until after 16.8 is added. 16.4, 16.5, 16.6, and 16.7 will be added in the usual fashion. 
then we get to 16.8. We want this part of the petal to overlap 16.4, 5, 6, and 7, but we want this part of the petal to go under 16.3. So we will clip the seam allowance on 16.8 at the point of the split seam. The part of 16.8 that overlaps 16.4 to 16.7 will be applique onto the rows. The part of 16.8 that will be overlapped by 16.3 will not be turned under. Then the remaining section of 16.3 will be applique onto 16.8. This split seam technique can come in handy for a variety of tricky situations. Roses are beautiful and I can't wait to see how they turn out on your June birth flower block. Don't forget to share your progress with our Birth Flowers Block of the Month Facebook group or on Instagram with hashtag birthflowerblock. And check back to the website at kathykwiley.com slash birthflowers for more tips and tutorials.